the patient in our case, 66 years of age, um, she's feeling her cancer. She's got pain. She's obviously got jaundice. We got to fix the jaundice, right? Any of our regimens, whether it's Fulfirinox or Napaclitaxel Gem, we have to get that bilirubin down um, to safely administer it. So on some level, we're waiting on that. She does have pain. Um, this would be a good case for maybe a nerve block too, as you're thinking about waiting on these patients to recover their, uh, their jaundice. But her performance status is falling. She's lost weight because of all of this. Um, so you want to reverse that. You want her feeling better. She doesn't have a huge tumor burden. It's not like she's full of cancer. She's actually got relatively small liver metastases, uh, relatively small primary. Um, and so um, our goal here is reversing her cancer. And you've got two tools that are very similar. Um, I always worry about patients like this in giving them three drug cocktail, Fulfirinox, of actually making their performance status worse. It's rare that you, you know, make them eat better, that they feel better, that they gain weight. So in a patient where I'm in for the long haul with systemic therapy, I like the two drug cocktail because it's more likely, in my opinion, to improve their overall performance status because the chemo doesn't beat them up as much. So in this patient, her marginal performance status or falling performance status, loss of weight, pain, those kinds of things make me lean more towards the two drug regimen than the three drug regimen. So the, uh, the two drug cocktail, the Jim Nad, Paclitaxel, I mentioned it's a pretty easy regimen to give. Um, the standard dose of 125 of nabpaclitaxel and a gram per meter uh, of the gem is doable in almost everybody. I always wonder why anybody would give single agent gem anymore because the two drug regimen more effective and essentially just as easy to give. Um, the big barriers you run into with the three week on, one week off schedule is myelosuppression. Yeah, there's minor nausea, pretty easy to cover. You don't even need big gun antiemetics for it, though. Fatigue, as is common with most chemotherapies, but not bad. And then you have some of the rare side effects, allergic reactions and things like that. Hair loss, probably the biggest thing that upsets patients, um, does clearly happen with both regimens, but probably more with the nabpaclitaxel. My biggest struggle with the regimen, honestly, is counts. And getting those three weeks in a row in at full doses in Washington, D.C., in Georgetown seems hard. Um, it's not uncommon that we'll have to hold that third week. And everybody has different strategies for managing that. Um, I think a very popular strategy is keep the doses full and go to every other week, which is nice on your patients as well. But I will tell you, I set out with a three week on, one week off schedule and see how they do. But telling patients right from the beginning that this may change over time depending on how they do. Um, partly, particularly in this patient, because I want her symptoms to improve. So I don't want to be too kind, too gentle up front. I want the drugs to work. I want to get them in. Um, but that's more or less how I manage it. And I will typically see patients at least every other week when they're on that. So I see them at the beginning of the cycle and on week three until I really know they're on a nice plateau, in which case I then start seeing them only about once every four weeks. The, the patient that presents had diarrhea. Why she got diarrhea? And one of the things that's a very common thread that we often miss in clinic is malabsorption. So when you have pancreas cancer, particularly with a blocked bile duct, or if we've radiated these people or operated on these people, is their pancreases are not making enough enzyme to absorb fats and proteins. This is when you ask the spouse, are they passing a lot of gas? Is it pretty stinky? The spouse is over there going like this. Um, that, if you take a good history, you can find malabsorption. And so we can fix malabsorption through the enzyme replacement. So look for this in a supportive care uh, setting for our patients. We watch their sugars because these are people that can get some uh, uh, adult onset diabetes because of what we do to their pancreas uh, during all of this treatment. 
Pain management is critical in this world, and we often forget nerve blocks. They're relatively simple to do. Our IR guys and GI guys like doing them, um, and so make sure we use our allied professionals to help with overall symptom management. And then I would say nutrition support is critical. These people are struggling to keep their weight. They have the malabsorption issue. They might have diabetes. So bringing in nutrition support uh, is really, really important as well. I encourage our patients to keep moving. Um, we really want physical activity as much as possible. Keep their heads up, keep smiling, have a plane ticket. Really address their sort of social, emotional needs. Because what I think we do too often as oncologists is we pin our patients down to our clinics. You know, we, we want you on time and precise and we're never going to miss a treatment, et cetera. And that's really not true. We need our patients out there living. The reason we're working on their symptoms and the reason we're treating their cancers is so they can keep living. And so we need to encourage them to do that as well.